you can just silence them. In just a moment, we'll begin the service. All right, at this time, we're going to have a congregational song. Brother James is going to come lead us. Uh, four years that my wife and I have had the privilege to know her. Uh, we had the privilege to work a lot with her specifically. And uh, one thing I could say about Joanna is that she's, uh, she's someone who is very much like social activity, likes having friends, likes being in the... Uh, you know, not being the center of attention, but likes there to be attention everywhere and all around and things happening everywhere at once. And yet, in spite of all of that, she's someone who likes to just, uh, when it comes to spiritual things, she likes to focus on God's word. And uh, one of the, the main things I remember about Joanna, just uh, in any a Bible class, any teen activity we ever had, she has a notebook there with her Bible. And uh, no matter what you're saying from God's word, she's writing it down. Even if we're just reading God's word verbatim, she's there writing notes and taking it down in the notebook and trying to remember it for later. And uh, I can't think of a, a better a testament to someone's character than that, that they care about the words of God. And so that's just something I, I would like to share about Joanna. Let's uh, sing one of her favorite songs, Be Thou My Vision. The words will be on the screen. We'll sing three verses. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me, say. Amen. Thank you for being with us this morning. Uh, let's open in a word of prayer, then you can be seated. Lord, thank you for today, the special occasion, Joanna's graduation. Lord, uh, just a beginning, uh, an ending to high school, but a beginning to uh, the rest of her life. I pray you bless the proceedings of today. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. And it's good to have Omar and Kara with us from North Carolina and uh, flew in late last night and I mean late and so and uh, they gave me an early Father's Day present it's American flag that says grandpa on it and so don't start calling me grandpa. <laughs> and so uh, and uh, Jerry and Carol if you'd stand up we got our aunt and uncle here and I saw Jenny running around here. Some, she's in the nursery, her cousin. And we're glad to have family here. Thank you. And it's good to have the Fesh family with us. Uh, best friends, uh, Joanna's best friends. And it's good to have Charlotte with us from Delaware. And she was my wife's best friend in college. And she's, they call her Aunt Charlotte. And it's good to see the girls over here. 
and uh, all the friends and family that's gathered here today to celebrate with Joanna. We're glad that she's able to have all those. We're going to have the trio sing at this time. Life's a journey day by day Filled with laughter and with pain But I know that he is with me through it all When with clouds my path is dim Storms of doubt arise within I find refuge in the shadow of the cross. I am calmly resting in the Lord. I am trusting fully in His work. Oh, whatever life may bring, my resolve will always When the Lord himself has brought me to this hour. Peace be still, my weary soul. Find your strength in Christ alone. For the Savior holds me by his mighty power. I am calmly resting in the Lord. Trusting fully in his word. Oh, whatever life may bring, my resolve will always be. I am calmly resting in the Lord. And when all my strength shall fail, and I has given me his promise he will roll the stone away i am calmly resting in the lord i am trusting fully in his word oh whatever life may bring my resolve will always be i am calmly resting in the lord oh whatever life may bring my resolve will always be Appreciate the trio there, and now it's time for Joyana to give her speech, and so we're going to have her come on back up here, and uh, mom's proud of her, and I'm proud of her, and she was homeschooled uh, because there wasn't a Christian school available in the area, and uh, She's one of the reasons I want to get a Christian school started here so our children have a chance uh, to get together and be schooled. But I'm proud of her for all of her diligent and hard work that brought her to this day. Okay. I do have a paper because I get nervous in front of people and also I forget everything. So I have a paper here <laughs> to make sure I get everything. So um, first I want to thank everyone for coming out today. It means a lot to me to see all of these people who have invested so much in my life. And I just want to say thank you for that. But I would like to say thank you to God for saving me and for giving me strength every day through everything that's happened in my life. And I can't express in words how grateful I am for him and his grace and his love. 
Um, I'd like next to thank my parents. Uh, I know it's been kind of hard <laughs> with me. I never make it easy. But uh, you both taught me so much about God, how to walk with him, how to love him. And um, I want to thank you for being patient for, with me, uh, even though I know it's not always been easy. Um, so thank you for teaching me about God and how to love him. I'd like to thank Kara, my sister. Um, I always looked up to you so much as a kid, and I still do, and I'm thankful that God gave me a sister like you. I also want to say thank you for my friends, uh, Christy and Abby, Brielle, the Banks, Taylor and Jade, and everyone else who's been my friend these past years, and Skylar Slater, Katie Swartz, yes, I spelled your last name right, and Kern McCullough, all who couldn't make it here today because they live too far away or they had something else going on, but are hopefully watching online. And I'd like to thank all of my friends' parents for being my second family, especially the Feshes who let me invade their house every once in a while and eat their food. And I just want to thank all of your parents for that. I'd like to thank Brother James and Miss Victoria. Thank you for all of the youth conferences and all the camps and road trips. Thank you for putting up with our teen group. I know that's been hard. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you for loving us as much as you do and for putting as much work into us as you do. It shows how much you truly love God and love us. Um, I'm glad that you've become a part of our family, and not only the church family here, but my family. And lastly, but most importantly, I'd like to thank my church family. You've taught me so much these past years that we've been here. I cannot express how much I love you and how much I strive to be like you wherever the Lord sends me. You're so welcoming and accepting and loving to everyone who comes in our church, no matter where they came from or who they are. And I just want to thank you for that. And this fall, I'll be attending Hiles Anderson College in Indiana. I'll be majoring in media and minoring in music. Thank you for all for coming and investing in my future. All right. This is a time where I'm going to preach a two-hour sermon. No. <laughs> to, to, to straighten everything out and Joyana that I possibly can before she leaves. No, no. It's, this is going to be a short uh, a challenge, as we'll always do at a graduation. Uh, 1 Timothy 4 says, Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself, and unto the doctrine continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Life is a journey, and we're all on different journeys in life. And that journey is up to us to choose to make a godly journey or an ungodly journey. There's no... no a uh, uh, gray area in the Christian life. There's no gray area in whether we serve God. You're either, either going the right way or you're headed the wrong way. And I'm glad that uh, Joyana has chosen the journey of serving God with her life. Uh, Jesus, when he was 12 years old, took a journey to Jerusalem. And uh, Mary and Joseph lost Jesus. Can you imagine losing Jesus? Hey, I'm Jesus' mom, and I lost Jesus. Uh, and, boy, she came back, and she said, uh, you, you know, we, we sought you sorrowing for three days. And Jesus said, wished you not that I must be about my father's business. And so, Joanna. Uh, as you take the journey of life, I want you to keep on the Father's business. The journey can be endured or enjoyed. It can make us bitter or better. It can be a disappointment or a delight. The world wants you to think that the journey is just random and out of your control, and uh, you have no control, but the Bible teaches us the journey is a result of the choices we make. And so... I want to give you four things real quick, and they will be quick. Number one, the journey of life is a great gift. Uh, for every single person here today, no matter, we're not promised tomorrow. We're only promised today. But the journey that every single one of us are on uh, ought to be just a, uh, a journey toward the Lord, with the Lord, 
meditate upon these things. Uh, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. A journey. Jesus' journey ended at the cross, but then it took up again at the resurrection. And now Jesus' journey is at the right hand of the Father. We don't know where the journey of life's going to take you, Joanna, but realize that it is a gift from God. And sometimes when you're in Bible college, you can get tired and worn out. And sometimes you can get uh, dis, uh, 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 gruntled or a little disappointed because of people. Keep your eyes on the Lord and on the gift God's given you. Number two, the journey includes growth. It's not only a gift, but the journey of life is growth. And we all ought to be growing. Boy, if you're doing the same thing that you've done for the last 10 years, that's the definition of insanity. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting it to change. It's not going to happen. It's a journey of growth. And real quickly, with that journey of growth, there has to come a discernment concerning our salvation. There's people that can sit in church all their life and know the truth of the word of God, but never accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. The Bible tells us, unfortunately, there are people on a journey that will go to church and, and will hear the gospel and will spend an eternity in hell because they chose to journey on the wrong path without accepting Jesus Christ as their Savior. Secondly, there's a desire concerning the scripture. That journey of growth is a discernment concerning salvation, but it's a desire concerning the scripture. Matthew chapter 4 says, Man shall not live by alone, but by every word that proceedeth. It's not up to us. It's not our choice. We're to obey every commandment. Some of them are not fun. Some of them are a blessing. But all of them lead to one thing, a journey that pleases God. And thirdly, it's a delight concerning our Savior. When you can lay your head down at night, Joanna, even if everybody else is criticizing you, even if everybody else doesn't agree, and you can say, I please my Savior today, you're growing in the Lord. Don't worry about what other people think. Don't worry about what other people are saying. And as a Christian, we need to decide we're going to make that journey a journey of growth, a journey that's a gift. Number three, it's a journey that's gradual. Dr. Jack Hiles taught me this in Bible college. Don't rush the wash machine. And uh, what does that mean? The wash machine goes through cycles, does it not? And if it doesn't go through all the cycles, you're not going to end up with a finished product. And boy, don't rush the journey. Enjoy college. We told both of our daughters, your freshman year of college, no dating. Why? Because a lot of young people get their focus off of God and on to somebody else. And boy, they short circuit their life uh, uh, rather than letting God guide and direct. The journey of life is gradual. Uh, no man, uh, Henry Ward Beecher said this, no man suddenly clears 40 acres of property. It takes time. And if you're going to grow for the Lord, it's a gradual growth, a continual growth. And we want to make sure it's not how high you jump, it's how straight you walk. Many of the people that got awards in college when Brother Fesh and I were in college are no longer in the ministry, no longer serving the Lord. Uh, it, 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 it's not how high you jump, it's how straight you walk, the gradual. But realize lastly, number four, the journey of life can be gratifying. Boy, I see so many people today uh, young people taking their lives at 14, 15, and 16 are just unbelievable. And uh, if I read statistics right, the, the fastest growing group that is taking their lives today is the 55 to 60 group. It just uh, people who feel like they have no reason to live. I want to say this, if you're following God's journey, you always have a reason to live. And life can always be gratifying. It doesn't mean you're going to drive a BMW 
and uh, uh, live in a mansion, uh, but it does mean we're sending rewards to heaven, and that's what's important in life. Uh, I'll finish with the story of Ruth and Boaz. Naomi went to the far country, and when she came back, she said, Call me Mara, because God hath dealt bitterly. Well, I got news for you, Naomi. God didn't make you take that journey. You and your husband took that journey, and when your husband passed away, Naomi, you decided to stay another 10 years. God didn't do that to you. You did it to yourself. But isn't it wonderful that, that Ruth followed Naomi back, and you know the story. Naomi met Boaz. They had a child, and their grandson was David, and their great-great-great-great-great-great-grandson was Jesus Christ. God can take the journey of our life even if we make some wrong turns and he can make it turn out to be a gratifying thing. Now, I just want to challenge my daughter, stay by the stuff, be faithful, don't get sidetracked and follow the Lord no matter who falls by the wayside. Just keep your eyes on the Lord. At this time... As the pastor of this church and Joyana's dad and the head of the homeschool group here at Pioneer Valley Baptist Church, I would like you to come forward. I certify this morning that Joanna has completed her course of studies prescribed by high school graduation by Pioneer Valley Baptist Home School Academy in the state of Massachusetts. I now confer on you a high school diploma with all the rights, privileges entitled thereto. You may receive your diploma. Would everybody stand at this time? You may now turn your tassel. In just a moment, uh, Joanna will be heading out to the back where there'll be a reception line, and then we'll be heading downstairs. There's plenty of food down there. I'm going to pray for uh, a blessing for Joanna and then a blessing on the food. And then we'll be dismissed uh, from the family first. We want to let the family get down there first. And then uh, we'll dismiss as we go back. Uh, and everybody will be invited to come down and fellowship with us. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for Joyana. Bless her, guide and direct her, protect her, provide. Holy Spirit of God, keep her on track. And Lord, thank you for all she's done to this point. And Lord, we'll praise you for how you use her in the future. Bless the food, the hands that prepared it, our fellowship to follow in Jesus' name. Amen. Joanna.